but like Dante from Clutch. <laughs> oh my god. I, 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 <laughs> who the How fuck is that dude? Yeah, that? There's actually not being the Danny. Alright, guys. I got <laughs> Oh, I got you guys okay, switched. Take, Fuck. Uh, okay, take it off the screen. I'll fix it while we're talking. All right, so we we have Slasher and John Slasher. joining it, and uh, I showed you that graphic, yes. guys. John. John made Don't that. Don't put shot. a dick in my mouth. That's all John, I'm gonna John, say. John made that graphic for us. Today. When you when you fix it, Beautiful. there better not be a dick going into my mouth. That's all I'm gonna say. You oh, can do God. anything else. God knows it. I didn't be have. It, I didn't even have that. Didn't even have that thought in my head until you mentioned it, so now I'm a little. Well, again, just please, John. Let's not ruin a beautiful relationship by putting a dick in my mouth. <laughs> All right, fellas, welcome to the show. Uh, everybody knows Slasher, of course. Um, yeah. But John, for those of you who might not know John, he was my co host for uh, Climbing the Ladder. Like, we started Climbing the Ladder together, so uh, if we're going to be only proper to have him on um you know just the final unfiltered my probably my hey. final show so and there's a lot more john clark than that man he's been around yes, the fucking he's block he's real old school esports like no doubt i like Richard. I... <laughs> <laughs> everybody does apart from uh day nine and and idra i think i think they're the only two Every time on this show you've been drunk, it's been amazing. It has always gone well. When that's it's happened. six a.m. It's six a.m. here. It's starting to get so, light outside, and I'm still drinking alcohol. So I, this is my dedication to the unfiltered cause. So if at this right. stage I slip up and ruin my career, I'm just hoping that the court of public opinion puts that, you know, puts that into perspective. Like, you know, uh, hopefully. But I, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I, I think everything I've said so far has been proper and correct. Yeah, I think and so. we should show proper and correct respect to John Clark, even though no one knows who the fuck he is. <laughs> and it's bullshit because John Clark is the most old school one here with Chris and doing shows and doing the esports shows. Uh, I remember watching you two doing Climbing the Ladder um, mm -hmm. back before Unfiltered came, and that was good <coughs> shit. So I think it is only fitting for John, too. Yeah, definitely. To be back here. And it really, I've known John for, oh, a man, time. a very long time. I feel like nine or ten. Very long time. Ten years now. Ten yeah. years. Probably ten or more. Like, I, I'd always known of John. Uh, but, like, we only really got to know each other when we started climbing. Well, when I say started, um, <laughs> I got like invited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 got, I got invited to be a, a co-host on... Um, climbing the ladder and it was like fucking you know blew my mind uh first of all not only about like what real old school esports actually meant like john clark as i said he is the king of kong he goes that far back we, in esports we talked about ranking yeah. systems earlier john i don't know if you oh, were you're oh, there for the thorns I, but like <laughs> this guy we system. talked about ranking systems with thorn thorn was on here man when we were talking Ooh. about it so did i get the right but, picture of him at least <laughs> yeah, let me look at this damn picture. This picture is like, <laughs> look at how, look at a yoga in this picture. Oh my god! Yeah, that's the right picture of Thorn. It's actually that's a good picture. picture of him. But like, but like seriously, like uh, <laughs> his love of Quake is. I I thought Rod loved Quake, and then Rod does love Quake. Like no doubt about it. But John's love of Quake, holy shit! Like every show we would do. No matter who the guest was, <laughs> John would be like, so anyway, I don't know if you heard about what's been going over on a Quake con or whatever. Like, he would just mm -hmm. stare it towards Quake, like, seriously. Like, and I'm not even good. I'm sure. not even that good. A slasher, slasher. It's like, important. My ass. Fucking important. I would whip the it shit out of you. I would <laughs> oh, definitely no, you always will. And that is true. But still, I mean, John is old school like me. Because you know what, Richard? I'll do respect to you and to Thorin and your fucking little Cattle Strike game, but all the great esport legends came from Quake what? and from Unreal, all right? Because that was the real old school motherfucking community. That's what we started with, and now we've advanced to watching League and Dota for the rest of my life, okay? <laughs> and that is fucking <laughs> just like. No, serious. I, I, I wish there was some I, Doom I, guys I, around. Yo, like, Doom is coming back, man. Faces. Doom's coming but, uh, back, baby. Un unfortunately, that hasn't happened. But no, you're right, man. I mean, I, Quake was never my game, but holy shit, like it's 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 tragic to think of a future without it. Like I, I hope something. It's so good. I mean, Quake's so yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, it's just 
But like, it doesn't have the attention it should. Yeah. That should be that should be the one v one esports game. I think everybody who loves esports uh, thinks that. All right, Slash. So got a topic. Got a topic planned just especially for Slasher. Mm. All right, Zoe Quinn, guys. Let's talk about Zoe Quinn, guys. <laughs> oh, hi on Slasher actually brought. Uh, he wanted to talk about Zoe Quinn. <laughs> yeah, did he I want to talk about Zoe Quinn? Yeah, no, no, he, did. he really he wanted to talk about Zoe really Quinn. Well, we, we were really going to talk about like the international or like some of Riot's rulings and how it would impact like all of esports across the board. And Slasher was saying like, why are you wasting your time on that shit? We need to talk about the important shit. Zoe Quinn, I think those were his exact words. I, I think so too. I think so, so too. I you know three blood, sources right here. It must be true. Blood. How many That's times how, you how good journalism with? works, right? Let's get down to the bare bones here. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, <laughs> this is you three on one. I have dealt with this on inside five game guys. Before, we got five so guys I'm already, here. <laughs> I'm already very good on the defense here in terms of these yeah, situations. I uh, so, I, I, to my knowledge, I do not know of any sleeping between me and <laughs> and Zoe Quinn. So I, All right, you know, Quinn. <laughs> And her game is very competitive, and I wouldn't want there to be a, a conflict of interest moving forward to cover her game as a competitive depression quest. Uh, who can beat their depression faster in life? Some people will never beat the game. Do you know about the Zoe Quinn thing, John? It'll I, just go no, on forever. I, know, you know what, Rod, I, I would love to see competitive I'm Googling quest. it right now, actually. A competitive would, depression quest? Oh I would God. love to fucking see competitive wow. depression so quest. So much. So much. I'm not even kidding. Sigli Who could oh be the God. most miserable in esports? Holy shit. Speed runs, baby. Speed runs. Sign me up for top, that, man. At the top of Google, I just put in Zoe Quinn, and there's something about a depression quest. She's... <laughs> Are we going to pull any of this? John. I'm serious. Shot is just... I love this guy. <laughs> I know oh. nothing about this shit. There's, there's I'm no reading up this. Basically, Rod had sex with some uh, <laughs> chick. Uh, in exchange for a positive game review. That's all you need to know. It's all oh, Rod. It's, yeah, yeah, it is. Rod sucks. That's it. Like, don't, don't even Google no. it further. Rod ruined no, esports. No, 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 no. You know how, like, if enough of you put this in, like, the internet and Google to search it, it'll, like, you know, keep getting more searches. So if you write, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are people used to do that with, like, um, six guy. Six guys. <laughs> Oh man, okay. Yeah, all right, just joking. All right, all right. No more Zoe know. Quinn. We talked about Zoe Quinn enough, man. The last last week. Um, but okay, I mean, no, no real. No. Level two, and it's actually blowing my fucking mind. No, we could, we could, because you know why? I actually have some strong opinions on this, and I would think Richard, this is actually a perfect place for Richard's mm -hmm. opinion on this, in a, in the legit way. Okay, everything about Zoe Quinn, none of it matters. Literally, none of it yeah. matters. At all, I don't care about any of it. It's just completely nothing. But the real thing that came out of it, which I don't know how we got to the point of Zoe Quinn into here, is like impropriety between video game journalists and uh, the the, de the developer industry that they work with, with, and then like taking money and all this backroom stuff. And somehow it's gotten to specifically video game journalists, not like mainstream journalists or movies or or music or like politics or anything we're just video game journalists which blows my fucking mind which makes me believe that the whole zoe quinn thing is just a bunch of the internet having a ton of fun with her because they're just going to be the internet and be total douchebags and then and then it, it's manifested into this whole video game journalism conspiracy fucking theory i have to say youtubers like john earlier are not exactly helping the situation the, it's now turned an argument that like you go to a YouTuber to find out like the real shit because YouTubers are more real to you, and they tell you what's really going on. But the journalist is fucking getting paid by the industry because it's all a big conspiracy, and journalists are rich motherfuckers. It's not the YouTubers that are the ones that are actually making tons of money. That's... And really, really, what it is is now it's there's people don't have faith. It really hasn't applied to esports so much. Mm -hmm. Somehow we actually haven't been in this whole thing it's been more well, like me because there's never been any credible reporting in esports anyway i mean what's I this mean, i mean no, no, not not a the... mass like it's been me you thorin and now we're struggling no but what, know, i mean like, what's going to happen here like somebody just leaves with you not to release an article i mean like what are we no, talking no, about what I rod's mean, talking like... about is absolutely on the money here it's like okay so um first of all 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to maybe read between the lines here. And I think one of the things that Rod's got the first issue with and absolutely is right to have is that games journalists are just journalists, yet for some reason we're labeled as gaming journalists. Like, if you're a journalist and you've got journalistic qualifications like I have, I, I, I don't know if Rod has them or not. I'm, I'm guessing he does. Okay. He's pretty... Okay, okay, well... You, you're ruining my argument here, Rod. Don't fuck with my shit. Uh, but Rod's really good and probably will have them and should have them. Um, I know Duncan doesn't, so I wasn't going to use him as an example. But, you know, I do. I went uh, I went to university. I got my degree. I, I came away from my degree. I got my NCTJ, which is the National Council for the Training of Journalists in the UK. I, I did my uh, work placement shit. And I don't consider myself a games journalist. I'm a journalist who happens to write about games. I think that's a very important distinction. And I would certainly credit Rod and Duncan, uh, regardless of qualifications, with that same level of respect. Uh, they, I, I have seen Rod write th about things that have nothing to do uh, with esports, and, and I, I'm sure Duncan could do the same stuff. So the idea that we're just like, you know, oh, we're games journalists, so we're le we're a lesser form, meh, it just fucking pisses me off. It really pisses me the fuck off. Like, that, 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 we, that we don't work, and we don't work hard, and we're not going to write legitimate stuff like the truth. It really makes me sick. I think um, it's just so gaming fans are so much more passionate and enthusiastic than any other industry right now, so that... What? No, 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 like no, 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 Wait, whoa, whoa. <laughs> more passionate than what? Like NFL, okay, NBA, dude. they have no pat. What does that even mean? Okay, because, no, really, when, when like, you know, the whole, to when Total Biscuit wrote his message, I could delete it on Reddit and I had, like, 20,000 comments in, like, an hour or two. It's, it, it's really interesting. Like, the gaming community can do some crazy, crazy social shit even more than pro sports than they really have on Twitter and on Reddit of, like, just ridiculous God, amount you have to, of, that's like um, a really bad bias though because keep in mind though that gamers are have a much higher tendency to be involved in online media than the average athletic fan will right too so like so while you're saying that like esports can do all these crazy amazing things online which is true they don't show the same numbers when you're talking about like espn viewership or like um like radio you know talk radio like listenership or whatever <clears throat> just um I, I, what, what I, I, what I get think, caught up in the in the bullshit what, a little what, bit. What, what I what I think uh, Rod Kant means, and like I, I I get this is, okay. We use the word passionate a lot in esports, and we use it to, uh, we we always try and subvert it to be something entirely positive. Um, and unfortunately, the reality is it can have very negative connotations, and in esports, um you know we, we use the word passionate and it's almost like an interchangeable term with obsessed in, in, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways uh and and in other ways you know fanatical that's another <coughs> uh, word that would be entirely appropriate um so when it comes to esports i think because people who play a lot of games they have a very small closed off world they 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 get themselves a setup they sit at a rig and they play for eight ten hours at a time a lot of the time, the outside world can, I'm not saying all the time, but it can get shut off. You can lose that perspective. I know I've even uh, felt that loss of perspective from time to time. So I think what Rod's really talking about is ultimately that when it comes to esports, that those fans can be really tied up in the narrative about who's good, who's bad, who isn't, you know, and, and sometimes they get really fucking head up about that, and sometimes they don't. So... When it comes to esports uh, reporting, gaming reporting, uh, you you can find yourself very quick to encourage a backlash just by expressing an opinion that isn't necessarily that controversial in and of itself, but it's controversial to those people who are so invested in one particular thing that they will go out and do some pretty extreme things to express that. Um, and esports is and still, you know, just a part of gaming. Gaming is like. Yeah. Much well, I, I, you know what? Like, I don't like to have the two terms as interchangeable, but I think as we move forward in the gaming industry, I actually think we're becoming more interchangeable. Actually, gaming and esports are becoming a bit more really? interchangeable. I don't know well, yeah, that. because almost every game that's made now is made with a competitive mode. 
and an online mode and a multiplayer mode. Well, and you're esports ignoring you have to be completely. Yeah, like you're the ignoring console. console. Yeah, no, it's, it's true, dude. It's true. Zelda, yeah, Mario, yeah, mobile games and consoles and, uh, actually. Yeah, consoles. Mobile games and consoles uh, make up mm -hmm. by far the largest percentage of all gaming, and those things aren't yes. really associated much with esports. Well, well, it, yeah, yeah, but what defines esports? Anything that's competitive is an esport. Yeah. I seem to remember mm. an organization called WCG that went to mobile only recently mm. and then recanted it as soon as the community got pissed off. Yeah, but they're trying so, to make competitive mobile games, which is a fucking yes. stupid shit idea. But mobile games I, in I, general, I don't, like, well, I think I, I think I think you I think I there know. could be. They just chose stupid ones like Adrenaline. I mean, like yeah, you know, like a driving game. I mean, it's whatever. Uh, yeah, where's my no Angry Birds game. esports? <laughs> no game. It's always going to be fine. No, it's, 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 no, it's you know. possible. No, I'm, no, saying. I'm not saying there's conceivably. Hearthstone could have conceivably launched on mobile. It's like it would be an okay platform for it, and I mean that would be an esport. It is an esport on PC, so I, I, I just think that you have to. I, I don't think it's impossible for esports to exist on mobile. Not at all. So yeah. So uh, to 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 get back to the point we were talking about, like I, I you know, I think uh, the whole um, gaming and esports journalism thing, like. It, it's basically it sucks that the mainstream media that are picking up on this story purely and simply because it's a controversy are labeling all games journalists like anyone who defines themselves as games journalist as being somehow dirty or not qualified or not legitimate like it really sucks and really uh, youtubers haven't helped and jesse cox is someone yeah. to throw a shot at right here who said that journalists are mad that we're taking their money and we're taking their jobs and shit no man you read off of a report that we write on the internet and then you read it which we did and then you tell your opinion about it i i and gotta edit. say though i oh, I, I think there's some truth i think there's some truth in the idea that like if i want a valid games review uh and i'm not just saying this because obviously we're buddies but I, I'd much rather uh, listen to john's opinion like total biscuits opinion than i would like ign oh you know, yeah but None that really depends. Matter. That no. depends on the kind of content you're looking for. Because to be fair, Total Biscuit has never released a review that's absolutely fucking hilarious as some of the shit that comes out of IGN. Not that IGN <laughs> intends for them to be hilarious. <laughs> it's it's more it's more my um my point that like journalists and not the ones that do reviews, but more the ones that like do reporting on news or uh, interviews and such. They have to report stuff, and then yeah, people that do bad. streaming and like videos and YouTube, they usually read what has been reported by the journalist and then they give their opinion, their expert opinion on top of, you know, the color well, yeah, of it, what has been it, reported. So what, what we're talking about effectively is the difference between uh, a, a news anchor at a credible TV channel and then a Fox news anchor. You know, that's oh, what we're really boy. talking about. Like, a, a, you know, somebody who actually has some sort of journalistic background and then just some guy who reads off a fucking auto cue, some fucking... Republican moron that they trot out. Uh, I, 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 I think what that's almost like there are some YouTubers who have great opinions, but you're right. I don't think they can necessarily be comparable to someone who has all the training and, and understanding about balance and and and. Yeah, but you, uh, but uh, couldn't you have all the training in the world and still be paid to say something? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that that course. that's I probably. Mean, so, so what you guys are saying is that there people are literally like the community just gets on like, you guys as soon as you make some sort of statement and they immediately contribute it to your connection with a company or with, you know, a personality or something and then it somehow discounts what you've said. No, is you're right. You're right. Kind of... No, no, no. You, you're right. You're thing... right. You're right. One thing you also need to realize is that that the, that parallel. I'm not trying to pull what we did earlier in terms of well, this is the real world, this works. But but I think that that what that paradigm that you're talking about of feeling a little bit shitty because YouTubers just rip what you guys are reporting on and then give color over it. That happens a lot in the real world. Like that's almost par for the course. Who? How many people actually read like actual news stories versus getting the digest version from like Rush Limbaugh or yeah. um, or any other even talk Reddit. show even like blog, Reddit yeah, or even Reddit. Reddit. Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's actually very normal now that people get their news, they always get it secondhand, and that's after being digested and spit out from whatever pundit they enjoy listening talk to about the news. Very, I don't think many people read sources firsthand anymore. I, yeah, but even I, the but... even the sources firsthand anymore are are uh, pundits themselves or people that are just uh, they're almost like interns, like put a news. Um, together. Well, it it depends. I don't I don't think usually. Pun would, would, um, would like Rush Limbaugh or like Glenn Beck, would those guys be considered pundits? 
or are pundits more like the people on the news network? What what, pundits, I don't know what would, news, pundits would be on the news network that They're are offering all... an opinion on an actual news item. I would think that guys like uh, Glenn Beck and those guys are more commentary. I don't know if that makes a difference. No, I, I think that's I mean, pundits, think, analysts, commentary. Yeah. T typically, it's very, from what I've seen personally, and I was brought up in a very crazy Republican household, so I watched a lot of Fox fucking news. From what I've seen in my life, pundits never, ever, ever, ever do any original reporting or do like original right. stories. It's always color over someone. 99.999% of the time, it's very, very rare for them to ever do any first hand reporting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I gotta say, like, I mean, you know, the bad rap that games journalism's getting right now. Like, there are certainly some things that need to be stamped out. Like, we've, me and Rod have been aware about this for a long, long time. It, it goes on in esports, it goes on in mainstream gaming. You try and buy favorable reviews, uh, favorable r reportage for your game through favors. Restart your video, that, guys. Restart your video. Uh, Oh, is another four hours. Another we've, four we've, hours. We've, we've cleared shit. eight. We've cleared eight. Really? Oh no, we, we've been way past eight actually. Look, like Rod, Rod's done. You know what you're no, saying Rod's though, Richard? That goes on in the movie industry the same. No, thing. no, I know. Yeah. I know. We saw your video, I know, John. I know we're not. Uh, we're not immune. I forgot how. Um, but you know, I, I think this is a hugely important part, uh, the, the thing to mention within within what's been said recently about us, like we do have some inherent problems in our industry uh, in the same way the movie industry does. And we've got to fucking address them because it's a smaller industry. Uh, nepotism, cronyism, whatever you want to call it, is going to fucking kill it stone dead because we've got a group of consumers out there that are relying on a very small and limited amount of people to be fucking honest. Uh, about the, the products that they buy. Gaming is a growth industry. And if you've got people out there that are going to say, like, oh, you know, this new Dragon Age, by the way, is the best game I've ever fucking played, 100%. And people go out and they spend £40 on it, or $40, or $50, whatever the fuck, and it turns out to suck ass, then that publication has effectively been part of a conspiracy that makes money for a big company. Unless they legitimately thought that, and it wasn't anything to do with what we know goes on, and that is you bribe the journalists, you bribe the publishers with uh, early access and blah, 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 and it just really sucks. The place that game journal journalism is in right now means that people are always going to raise questions. Let's say Rod, who uh, is away from his desk at the moment, he had to do a review for GameSpot on a game. Okay, he's back now. But uh, uh, let's say, I don't know, CBSI had funded the publication of a game and Rod gave it a good review. And people, because of everything that's been said negatively about games journalism, wanted to make out that Rod was a corporate shill. That harms his reputation permanently. They can only really level that at him because other people have, have been corporate shills in the industry. It's, it's a terrible you know, uh, spiral to get caught up in. And I just think that what we need to fucking do is we need to actually embrace the people that we know can be trusted. And unfortunately, a lot of those guys are YouTubers. Um, there's no, there is no getting away from that. There are games journalists that you can rely on to give impartial reviews, but increasingly in this industry, they're becoming few and far between. YouTubers, their sole, uh, Reliance, the sole thing they need to be concerned about is their fucking audience. I, I, don't, I don't think games journalists have that kind of pressing imperative right now. So that's yeah. something to be mindful of. Steven, restart your cam. I don't know what's going on with you know a what, lot dude? of Steven's cam. I'm getting sick of your fucking shit, Chan, man. <laughs> <laughs> I broke your show. That was probably... No, no. What happened, what happened Rod, was that the four-hour thing went over and had to restart <laughs> I'm about to restart the call. Hold on. Let me restart the call. All right. Work, motherfuckers. I know. I think this is there about is right. Destiny hiding the erection that he said he had earlier. Like, <laughs> I think I think he's doing something about it. I think he's dealing with it. He's de How is he dealing with it? I can you don't explain? Can you explain? Go into that. Perhaps someone hey, so... dealing with what? I just rejoined. What I missed? How are you dealing with what? Ooh, How are you dealing with your erection? I, I think John Clark can explain. <laughs> That's it. I'm not joking. That's exactly what. 
John, John, where the fuck are you? Hey, so I didn't even really want to talk about this. I guess I was somewhat angry thinking about this before, and then you mentioned this freaking woman again. <laughs> Ruined my whole mindset. Um, wow. Sorry, dude. But yo, jour journalists do real work. YouTubers stop talking mad shit. If you want to, you want to try some reporting, go ahead, big boys. Mm. Okay. Fair, what? Enough. Fair enough. No, it's you, true, dude. It's true. Yeah, sorry, you want sorry, to contact some sources and like do like a report and like write about it? You can be more than welcome. It's like not easy. I mean, I I see this a lot as well. Like people think that all we do is we just message people on <laughs> Skype. Yes. Right, but to be it's fair, wonderful. to be fair, they're the great days when you can just message someone on Skype, and obviously that does go on. I'd probably say maybe 30% of the stories that I've filed in the last year have literally just been Skype conversations, which is super easy. But the other 70% is like, fuck me, dude, hard work. Like, oh, I gotta have a conversation with this guy. This guy says something that's really vague. I gotta add this guy, who's this guy? Then I gotta email this guy, do a phone call with this guy. And then I gotta meet this guy in person. And this guy only wants to meet in the dark and we both have to be dressed as chickens. And it just gets fucking super weird, like to get some of the fucking stories. Like it, it, it really is a tough old job. And that's the other thing as well, the amount of hours you gotta pump in. I don't, I, put it this way, I don't know how Rod uh, does it, dude. Like, uh, because with his lifestyle, he's a nocturnal cat, man. <laughs> like, I, 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 have to, I have to sleep like maybe four or five hours a day when I'm working on a real fucking story. That's I... not gonna work. But... On a no, real I story? <laughs> yeah, on a real story. Not like well, 90% of the fluff I publish, obviously. Which, obviously, I, I, I mean, I make up half of it. I mean, let's, let's be real, okay? So, <laughs> Oddly so... enough, I have actually. I've actually read some of those rants. Holy shit. <laughs> Just no, no, not on, the editorials. On, on. God, the editorials. Christ, that's easy journalism. I mean, shit. Yeah. That's like wake up with a hard on uh, <laughs> and you can't. Morning you can't wood. Put, yeah, you wake up with morning wood and you can't punch it out of your pants. So you just write, why Reggie is an asshole by <laughs> Richard Lewis. And that's it. And it's got nothing to do with Reg whether Reggie. Hang on, I was starting to get a speech about it. I've, I've combined oh Wedgie and Reggie. But it's got nothing to do with whether Reggie is an asshole or not. It's just got everything to do with the fact that I couldn't get rid of my erection that morning. And you write an editorial and it's super easy. But like, <laughs> I, the actual real act of journalism is difficult. All right, open topics, whatever. We have in a I have... real plan. I have notes for from the show so far. I wanted to, wow. to recap some of uh, today's yeah. moments from uh, earlier. I have to say, the beginning of the show with uh, Richard and the Big Bad Wolf, that was that was that was amazing, Richard. You're <laughs> such an asshole. You're such an asshole. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! You fucking talk shit about Wolf for like ten minutes. Sure, Jeff may have started it, but you fucking destroyed this guy. It made you no, bring, well, brought him on, like. It is this was, dude, bro, this is horrible. Right? Like, you have to understand the position I'm in when something like that occurs. Like, I'm not going to tell the guys, don't bring a guy on who I don't like. So it would be really unprofessional. But equally, do you want to know what's so fucking lame about esports? Is like when people, like, like here's the thing. I, I wouldn't even go as far as to say I don't like Wolf. Like, that would, that would be too far. Because, like, all I've really got to judge him on is, like, one or two tweets. But I don't. <laughs> I want to get to know the guy like i'm not interested in his story or who he is or like oh i was drunk that night so it's okay like i just get fucked you oh, oh my fuck god off. this fucking Here's... anger Jeez. this is off two tweets man two fucking tweets dude oh my Richard. God. Am I be... honestly i'm asking you guys i'm like is that irrational like i don't think yeah, it is Richard, you have like Richard, a huge Richard. hatred for absolutely like, no irrational reason. can i have a real talk with you richard and i want to have a real talk with all of esports right now all right me and you all of esports have, have, we, we 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 have history i think you're a total asshole for things that you've said to me over multiple occasions and articles and different totally so many different fucking things i can think of but that's fine and i still love your work and your work is amazing and you're and you're a great journalist, and I respect you, and like all that shit. And then whatever, it's cool. I'm just, it, it doesn't matter. It's fine. And that's how it has to be for everyone and for everything, because there is something about someone that has 
everyone has done some fucked up shit. And for a lot of people, that they've done multiple fucked up shit. And you could always find some fucked up shit to talk shit about someone in esports. And I've been around to know probably everything about everyone. I could probably say some shit about every single person, including myself, which is still jobless and totally fucked right now. Uh, and uh, so I totally know, right? So, like, do you have I to I always kill... liked you, though, dude. No. I always liked you, though. Yeah, do you no, have no, no. to destroy Wolf? No, because whatever, but fine, that should happen. Let's talk about happen, our, beef. Let's talk about our beef. Let's talk about our beef, right? So I had I had a few swipes at you publicly, which was, this was the norm for journalists, <laughs> the esports journalists to do, uh, to make yourself look like the big dick. No, you, you don't. Would... I didn't do it. You, you I never did it. Anyway. I, yeah, no, oh, come no, on, I, Ron. Ron. What? Come on. Give me examples. Bring it. Oh, oh no. So, I, I, yeah, it's 6 a.m. Oh, I'm going to start going through your Twitter history. Your, 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 <laughs> if I, no, if I here's the reality. About you, someone, you it was because I really thought about the subject, and I was not just the trying to start time, The like, only time I ever got upset, Rod, the only time, like, literally, I ever got upset with you, like, I've always actually, like, seriously, I always liked you. So, okay, there was a, there was a tiny little thing, because we're being honest, since the last episode of Unfiltered, there was a tiny little thing, like, I thought when Scoots left Live on 3 and me and you were talking and shit, like, I thought maybe I'd get, you know, you, know, oh, here you bring we go. Richard on, here yeah, we go. yeah, and I might be the third guy, so that kind of was the thing. But like, that was in my mind. So I wasn't really upset about that. But like you never asked. And I thought, wow, it could have totally worked. And it would have been awesome. But the, the only thing was the whole cats thing. You know when the whole cats was going around saying that like I was deranged and stuff. And um, yes. I think you told cats. I think you told cats I was bipolar. <laughs> and yes. I, yeah. And I thought I like, yeah. And I thought, fuck, dude. Like, not bipolar. <laughs> Like, <laughs> say anything. Anything. like yeah, anything but bipolar. Schizo, but not bipolar. You know, anything's better than that. bipolar. So, I don't know, man. That was when I was like, you know what? Like, and I, I admit this, like, maybe for the next six months, I think after that, I was like, okay, Rod's posting an article. <laughs> nice reporting, Rod. <laughs> like, just being a fucking douche. Like, do, do you realize plus, that I had to say that because of things that you had done previously to be such a fucker, which I don't even remember what they were, but no, I, I know. totally know I did not start the fuckery. In terms no, of me, the, well, I, I don't even know, dude. I don't even know. I can't even remember where it starts. Like the idea of me and you having a matter. rivalry strikes me. It doesn't matter. It really you strikes me as nothing matters. Oh, it and this is the other matter. thing as well. I want you to keep in mind that recently, very recently, like, and it would have been for a tiniest window of time with the way things turned out, we could have been co-workers, dude. And and oh, here we go. I, I, wow, I, the gloves no, are coming no, off no, now. No, oh. these aren't claws. Like. We could have been co-workers, and I don't think you would have felt comfortable with that, and it would have... It, it kind of sucks, like, because I've, I've literally... Like, I, when when I said... I messaged you, like, a while back, and I was like, you know what, dude? Like, I am being an asshole. Uh, we shouldn't... W there's, like, five esports journalists. <laughs> there's, like, five of us. Why the fuck are we all arguing all the time and saying shit about each other and i wanted to make friends and that was nothing to do with the potential of getting a job and then it yes. turned out maybe i would yes. have got a job and and then i don't know man it just kind of it sucks it sucks that we were on the on the wrong side of the fence with each other for a long time bring did. up the question richard be... are we gonna talk about that the, the what uh, richard what just the whole are we gonna talk I about that i mean i i look i don't know because i brought I, I don't want to bring up the whole Joe in the Zone Edwards thing because, um, like, like Rod, I, I look, I get the position, Rod, after his uh, on gamers job. Joe in the Zone Edwards is the best. It was the best thing ever. Look, if, I'm, if I'm gonna pick ten names, I know how to pick them. But like, no, look, here's the thing, like, uh, Rod, Rod going from on gamers, like, I think they lost a massive asset, and I said that, and I, I wrote an article, a huge article in defense of him and how Reddit shouldn't be killing fucking careers like they did and, and blah 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 like i mean I, I i can't think of a time i've ever really said anything that like super negative about rod in in that sense and i know it, it, it just i always I, I always think we're the fucking dream team like we should have worked together at some point and we haven't and it just sucks that, that's we still can't doing. just because the show's over doesn't mean you still can't work hey together. well I'm not, I'm not doing shit you're doing great it's actually all good right now no, but it was never about that, man. It was my actually overall point is look, everyone in esports has done some shit, okay? 
And if you've been around long enough, you can All think right, of gonna... multiple things for multiple people. And because of that, I mean... I have fuck I, this. All right, I'm, I'm going to ask the unfiltered questions here. All right, here we All go. Right. Here we go, Ron. Right, like, did, did you want Richard at On Gamers? I said no. Okay. Said because oh, well, okay, let's hear it. Let's like why? Oh. Because of previous transgressions that Richard had shown to me and my colleagues at the time. This was more on a, not it's not a work level. Richard is amazing at his job and what he does. It was just that like I would It was the old boys club rejecting the it, fresh blood. No, no, no. no, no, no. Richard it was, is pretty it was... old. <clears throat> I am Jeez, from Cadrid. I remember from Cadrid. Like, dude, I'm like, pre- I know Richard from like way back. It's really not like uh, the uh, that reason. It's really not. Do, do you want to know? Do you want to know what it was? Uh, all, all stems from. It stems from. Uh, okay, so me and Travis had got into some fucking long drawn out argument. I can't remember what started it uh, because it's really weird. I think I might have started this actually. Uh, because um, Travis had been kind of respectful. Like, I remember the first time I was digging out Travis and poking Travis. He was like, one day I hope to be as good as you. And I was like, fuck you, you shit. Oh, wow. It, it, no, no, seriously, like, his um, his being polite to me made me feel he was being more disingenuous. I, I don't know if that was the case or not. So eventually what happened was um, when I was working on a story, uh, and and on gamers were doing this thing at the time, and 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 you'll you'll forgive me for for uh, bringing this up, Rod. Uh, and it's a stupid thing. It, this is like what happens in the journalism industry. So I would do all the digging, and I would get the story and get the leak, and I'd put a leak out into the public domain. But then I'd have an anonymous source, and then what on gamers would do is they would reach out to someone they had on Skype again, this Skype journalism, and they would say come on man what what's the inside scoop ready boop we're on gamers and they go okay well you know it's this and then they would go now it's confirmed now it's real and their post would jump above the post at esports heaven uh by, by quite quite a quite a way because they were like we've confirmed it we've got a quote and i i didn't have that access so and and that was all that was kind of pissing me off a little bit because that traffic was like pretty much my my remit like i was in a massive pressure in my job like i was being told if we don't keep this traffic up we're gonna have to close the website people might lose their jobs we had to lay off all the editorial staff it was like i was under immense pressure as an editor to to reach out and get this traffic to keep 12 people employed um so i was doing crazy shit to like look i'll get all the leaks and i'll write all the editorials and i'll take all the heat because that's what we need to do as a business and then these guys were coming along and effectively like we'll add a skype quote to an article you broke and a story you broke and then we'll say it's ours now actually i've got no right to be pissed off about that because that is how the game is played but at that particular time it was pissing me off and um what 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 happened actually was Travis had um, spoke to a guy and said um, from XDG, it was about the XDG leak, and they'd said to the guy, can you say Richard Lewis's account is wrong? Like, they'd explicitly said that. And I I got uh, a chat log that showed that. Oh, can't hear you, man. Uh, and I went, you know what? Oh, that's beyond the remit. What happened? Okay, yeah. there we go. I said, I said, that's beyond Am I back? Am I back? Yeah, you're okay, back. So I said that's beyond cool. I said that's beyond the remit of journalism. What you've done there is you've you've effectively um, tried to influence someone to say something. Now, people can judge the merits of that, and I went mental about it. And I went to Kim Rom and I went right. This is what I've got. These are the logs. You tell Travis to fucking stop doing this shit, and you tell these guys to stop pissing on 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 me and ruining my reputation. Because I've got to protect my publication's reputation, or these logs go public. So Kim, being Kim, being the diplomat, he he went and said, uh, "Don't worry, I'll sort it out." And within thirty minutes, I had a phone call with Travis, and we got along famously, and we put it all behind us. But that that instance, that me, the fact that I went full fucking blackmail and DefCon Five or whatever you want to call it. Um, that was what made Rod and, and Travis and guys like that not want to work with me at on gamers, and that's why it never happened. That's true, Rod. I mean, his stories. Um, that was part of it. That wasn't the exact. Uh, 
from what I remember, that was most of the story. Yeah, there was more to these chat logs than a former colleague that we have in a private chat that he gave you and using it as like blackmail against us. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, more... yeah. It was, uh, it, it was uh, the guy who'd given me the chat was already an on games employee, and I'd really fucked him over. Like he showed it me in absolute confidence, and then I, 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 I basically leveraged it to, to. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay. Yeah, you know, this, this is the reality because, yeah. like, seriously, what people don't understand, like, uh, so I felt my not just my job was under threat, but my publication's future was under threat. So I, I, I reacted to that in a very negative way, and I, and okay. I still, I still want to stress, I don't think that anyone from on gamers should have been encouraging people from teams to say Richard Lewis's version wasn't true explicitly. Of you know, I, I don't think that should have been happening. That is ridiculous. Um, yes, that should never happen. So, so um, but, but, but that doesn't excuse my behavior at all. Two wrongs definitely don't make a right. So this is why, moving forward, I had to jump through a bunch of crazy hoops. And I really wanted the on-gamers job. Like, seriously. Like, uh, again, there's no harm in saying this right now. Like, I, I told Kim Rum and I, I, I told Hunter Lee and I told Rod that I really wanted to be at on gamers. Like I really wanted to be part of on gamers. I felt that was where my future belonged. I wanted to be part of that team, but they didn't feel they could trust me, and that's why it never happened. So there you go. Uh, I mean, it was, I mean, I had some personal things too, just from you. And you know, by then, when after you apologized, and I read it, and that it was like the same time when my own when I blew up <laughs> on gamers anyway. So then I went. I've been in reclusion for a little while. So I've, you know, the personal part. I'm, I'm, you know. That doesn't ever bother me anymore. That was almost why I brought up the whole wolf thing. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, like, chips, man, wolf's wolf. Let him be wolf. Like, who cares? Let everyone do what they're doing. And if they're not good enough, they will fall out anyway. If you're not good enough at your job, whatever you do, you're a caster, you're an interviewer, you're one of the, you know, the host on a host, you're a fucking streamer. If you're not good enough, people won't watch you. People won't care about you. You won't get paid and you'll just drift away. And the best is the best that we survive anyway. So do we as the industry need to truly talk shit about everyone else that it's that's not related to like the actual game? Like, I, like the whole Monty Reggie thing is a good example. Like, I don't give a shit about TSM or CLG. They're both terrible teams. Neither of them matter. None of that, none of that matters because no team is good anyway. And the whole the whole drama just manifested for the League of Legends esports community. That's why there's 28,000 people watching Summoning Insight Insight for the last three hours, which is unbelievable <laughs> to me. But it's all on just it's nothing. Just drama. It's on drama. Which, I mean, that's what it's yeah, about. Yeah, but, but like that is, that is like good esports drama. The rest of this, like, let's smack talk this caster and this host because we didn't think he was good enough based on our expert opinion and who the fuck are we to say really because every we're all almost experts now like you who said it best on your tweet dude where you were like the clg tsm beef is just lip service to the fans like neither of them are gonna fucking really go to worlds or if they do go to worlds they're not gonna do anything and it's just it's the only way to keep na hype or any form of na relevant and you know you're very astute in making that point dude wolf's a good starcraft caster i think you should keep doing counter strike if thorin should do counter strike too you should do counter strike i think fucking whatever unpopular opinions there may be out there those should keep happening because fucking unless you have a better idea and can organize this more properly like internet esports people then just let it be let's all get along man positivity but you know um i why I... did it take you getting fired to become cyber jesus why did it... <laughs> cyber <laughs> jesus no i mean you gotta understand richard you you have been a fucking thorn in my goddamn side for many different things you know so I held. Well, tell probably... me why. Tell me why. Come on. You told you would, you would say things that like I like. Um, I, uh, I I I call on live on three. I like planted calls to to get people to call oh, in. God, they, the J they were right. like so the JP thing, dude. Come but on. you're just insane what? though. Like, why would I do that? It's so retarded. What is wrong with you? What is and this? I don't even other... remember this. The JP thing. Like so, Richard God. would say, I, I had JP, oh, like, I put, like, plant this. JP to call, like, call on Live on 3 because we didn't get to oh, talk to Richard. Oh, I remember Richard. that, yeah. Or something yeah. happened because no, it was it was, some... it was the time or, like, I forgot or no, it was, it was something scripted. scripted. It was, like, scripted. It was over, uh, yeah, no, it, it was wasn't. Over... You two were retarded. You two were just completely <laughs> was... retarded. Why would I script that? It was so... Why would I do no. that? 
it was no over. reason that would happen. It was when that whole fucking article had come out, Broken Promises, and you and, and Marcus didn't even do me the fucking courtesy of reading the article, but you talked about it on your show. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. right. <laughs> and then at the oh, end, God. and then at the end, JP fucking weighs in and goes, well, you know, I read the article, and I just want to say that I think all of the people that were mentioned in it are just great. So I went... <laughs> I went, this is bullshit. Like, you obviously planted that guy. It's not like you don't know JP. <laughs> like, so maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we take maybe... phone calls, you know? He was at the show earlier, not me. <laughs> I know. But there you go. I mean, come on, dude. It's not always entirely it, serious. It... But play some context on it. Like, it's not just some insane conspiracy theory. Like, no, on, but... but I, you know what? It's like I'm mentioning petty shit. But there were, you know, there's yeah. probably stuff I, I uh... Hey, it's esports. It's all petty shit, dude. It's all petty you know, shit. Right? I, you know, lately, I I feel like I'm entering old man stage. I'm not old man, but I, I yelled, I yes, yelled it are. on Twitter yes. at Carmack's wife for taking a shot at um, Thorin and Lurpus because you, she, she said that no one, I'm surprised that people watch ESL1 without Thorin and Lurpus. And it's like, do you really have to do this? Like, okay, Thorin is not working ESL because the comments that he made, he's already been publicly shamed, almost killed in Poland. He's had all these issues. Everyone rags on Lurpus for being, you know, a dick and him having his own opinion, but we all have our own opinions. We're all assholes anyway. Um, but then do you really have to, like, totally, like, castigate people on more so than than usual can't we all just like keep it strictly business oh but see once we get this is where it's we need this shit because in real sports it's the same way man i mean there are cast there no are people way, man i you can't see like, no. to certain people i cannot stand listening to certain people uh, okay, but uh, you don't have the yeah. NBA talking talking shit about Jeff Van Gundy and like and Mark Jackson about like get off my broadcast or whatever. <laughs> like you don't see the the uh, the ESPN dudes talking about the TNT like halftime show no, not, snarking not at it or anything. Do you? No, probably not. Right, that, you don't see organizations snarking at casters in fucking pro sports like we do here in esports because we're all like little babies and we all get really butt hurt about everything. We do get butt hurt quite easily, don't we? Well, it gets back to that same discussion we had earlier, right? When Robert was on and Thorin was on, just about the holistic thing, right? Um, it's a highly competitive, cutthroat industry right now. I mean, would you disagree with that? I mean, that's that's. I, I, look, true, I, right? I think I mean, anyone who's been in esports for a long period of time, it does get hardwired into you because there was a brief period of time where maybe there was like one paid job. Uh, for a journalist, one paid job for a shoutcaster, one paid job for a, uh, you know, a esports uh, manager of an organization or whatever. Opportunities were super limited, and I always, I always think that if you've been around in esports for a long period of time, it is hardwired in you that you look at somebody that operates in the same space as you, and you can't help yourself. You think this guy is potentially taking food out my fucking mouth and you go into a super aggro mode. And that was how it always was back in, you know, 2004, 2005. And and that's kind of almost how it is now, but it doesn't need to be that way now because opportunities are out there, you know? And I think like me and Rod have kind of learned and, you know, we've come up with each other and it's not always been fucking friendly, but like there's that, that respect has always been there. Um, and you know, I, I, Rod's probably right. Like maybe you shouldn't ever fucking call anyone out for doing a bad job. Like maybe it's not my place. I don't know. But um, it, it, I'm it, I'm I'm getting more angry on that level lately. Definitely. Yeah. No. 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 I, I think if you've been in esports a while, it's very hard to get past that. Like seriously, it's very hard to grow out of that. Uh, really, honestly. R um, Richard, do uh, do you really think there's uh, a lot of opportunities in esports right now? Compared to what, what that was ten years ago, yeah. Paid, Definitely. paid opportunities. Yeah, yes, yeah. paid opportunities, yeah. dude. Okay. Because I mean, fuck, like, I, I, when I first started, I mean, holy you mean shit. Like, just for paid opportunities, just for journalism, you think there's a lot? No, no, I mean across the board. No, right? in general, in general. In but general. I would even say, I mean, a year ago, I think there was more than there are today. Mm, uh, I mean, no. I, I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing a recycling. 
I've just when 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 because I'm out of it a little bit more, but I see a, just a recycling. I mean, StarCraft II we know is not nearly as big, so all of those jobs went away, and the people mm-hmm. that moved on to to other segments are really this a lot of the same people that may have been doing things in StarCraft II. To me, it just looking on the outside at, at this point, just looking on the outside a little bit, it feels almost like it's just a regurgitation a little bit, and that it's mm-hmm. just not. It, no, but they're. It but just they're, feels like I, no, no. I, I, no, I, I mean, but, they're, but the they're overall, going. the overall coverage of, of esports and the overall interest in esports has only risen. But, Maybe not by StarCraft Two, but on, on esports as a whole, has sure. only risen for the past five years. Sure, but yeah, I'm but, talking. Well, the, the people that you're okay, talking so about. What sort of opportunities are you what are are you talking about? Like, what organizations are hiring right now? Right now, what is happening in esports where there's like an influx of opportunities? Well, there's more organizations hiring casters. I mean, like. Before okay, it was so more of like a, con- I mean, you know, like ESL has like in in-house casters now, right? And yeah, and, and most- you got Trevor's like Nathanius are getting work now. Like if he can do it, anyone. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> so bad. I think what you're talking Ooh. about, John, is like some people like I don't know, quote unquote, move on to other games. But I think when they move on to other games, they move on to new games. So it's like it's mm-hmm. new jobs, anyways. So it, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not taking like the the actual number of jobs is kind of shrinking because of it. Like StarCraft, I, think, I, think, I don't even think there's less jobs. I think I think there's just as many. It's just different people. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think with the growth of esports as a whole, there's like loads of extraneous jobs that, that, that kind of come up with it. Yeah. And that can be in the journalism sphere or it can be um, in the video content sphere. It can be things that maybe people don't think about, like, you know, uh, coaching. I mean, like sports psychology, mm-hmm. e- esports psychologists, that's all of a sudden a thing. You know, like okay it might not give anyone existing within the space a job but it's still a job that's going to be promoted through the the, the growth of there are more players that have yeah and there are and and there there ever have been yeah Yeah. definitely more players just with riot alone that's automatically more players so i i I definitely feel that like um you know maybe where we were 10 years ago uh, you could, if, if you were to say to your parents, like, hey, I'm going to go work in esports, they'd just say, okay, son. And they'd wait until you went asleep and then put a pillow over your face. Oh, shit. Because it was the kindest thing. Uh, I, 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 don't think, think, I think it's still like that. I don't I mean, think it's, it's still... like that. No, <laughs> it's I pretty think that, fucking hard. I've got to be honest, it. Steven, I think you're a lot less likely to get smothered by your parents. I just want to put that out there. Like, I'd say about 20% less likely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maybe 20% yeah. less likely, sure, but. Yeah, I no, mean, I'm like, there are a lot of people making a living in esports now. Like, you can just go through, like, even just, like, the League of Legends stuff. But, like, there are people, there are a lot more YouTubers now that are able to make money on games like this. Um, for League of Legends, there's the guy that does the, uh, like, the patch notes of bridge version. There's the Sky Williams guy. Um, th- I mean, like, there's a lot of people that are making a living on just the YouTube side of things on some of these games that weren't before. Um, you've got a lot of streamers making a decent living. If you go through Twitch now that, you know, League wasn't as big as it was, as it is now. Same with Dota. Um, Hearthstone. There's a lot of people there. Now Trump, there's a lot of like like Trump wasn't really anything in StarCraft too. He's making a big living on it now. Who the fuck is Raynad? Yeah, Raynad owns a team and he's a big streamer. Is he too. anything before Hearthstone? No, no, he's a Magic player yeah. that uh, was controversial Magic yeah. player. Right, yeah. So yeah, I mean, so you do have all these. You do get a, a lot more people in these different arenas. Maybe like the loudest ones you see or the most popular ones are recycled, which I mean, I guess is to some extent is to be expected, but. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, John, you kind of missed it earlier, but earlier in the show, that um, you guys were talking about like when Robert was was on and like how esports is bullshit. I have esports is bullshit written in caps for me as as patch notes for as today's show. <laughs> uh, yeah, as a total note, and like this, the cynicism that I that I hear, and really, you know, the whole mantra of like four esports is completely bullshit. When you're trying to like run a business and be real, you're not even being real when you say four esports. But I will say that everyone is in this because they love the industry like all of these businesses that are within the esports industry is technically just they're all startups it's they're they're almost like they're they're tech yeah. startups before tech startups got cool and then you have like a ton of them inside of an industry that doesn't even exist working together cohesively to create the industry while they compete against each other to survive so there really is a for esports because everyone when they got in doing whatever they wanted to do got in because they love the competitive game of whatever it is that is they that why did you said no to richard lewis joining 
Mm-hmm. That's not true. Like, wait, you're speaking from, like, the most idealistic, like... That's... No, no, look, but we have, you know... Personal I'm a special case, Steven. You business. should know that by now. No, no, it's not... No, you... Businesses and people will have their decisions based on things that happen. But I, I'm saying that, like, generally everyone is doing this for esports. Like, everyone in the industry is not making a ton of money. Only very few yeah. people make like a lot of money from you that that that's bad that statement is really bad like that's not healthy for anybody that like there might be a small there well like the hardcore people might think that's a good thing but you don't want an an environment set up where everybody is living off of the charity of other people off of volunteer work or super low paid work or like everybody is doing it for esports like i want people to come into our environment and do things for the money and find profit that's like that's the sign of like a healthy throbbing erect <laughs> healthy community you know no and somebody I, I comes totally into a community and they're like oh yeah everybody here is in it for esports like you get into like this weird cult thing it's like well is anybody actually making money you're like this fuck okay. the like fuck this that shit. is that is very true and i mean no one should work for free no one should ever fucking work for free that's bullshit i mean if you're gonna work you should get paid no matter what it is i'm also personally against like don't donations and such but that's like a whole other argument and i heard you guys talking about earlier in the show a good example no one mentioned is leo laporte from twit uh, from twit.tv I think pretty famous this week in technology and ev- all the money he makes and all the staffing for everyone is donation. The entire show, all the staff, he makes like $200,000 a year or some shit onto donations. It's the entire business model of the thing. Um, but I still think like, like I right now, I don't know what I'm still doing with, with my life because my life is totally fucked since everything has happened. Right. So I still, the ultimate goal is to continue working in esports, and I want to do that. I could probably, and, have to look for you know i'm looking outside to see just what is around oh, in dude. internet There's land and around out there but i mean you want them. yes Holy but, shit, though. but but it's really like we we all want so then i want to work in esports like this is i have to work in esports because i love the industry i love the sport that we've all worked to like we've all competed because we're, we're working as jobs but we're all love this, this thing in the very end so we all in the end want it to succeed in the right way we don't want it to succeed in a corrupt way that will not live on to the legacy that we think it deserves we all want it to work and it has to work in like a real sense of the world but i still think generally everyone like should be more positive less cynical i mean we should be cynical and try to dig into things that are wrong and there's many things in the esports industry that are fucked up with people not getting paid and players and teams and contracts and the services and cpm rates and making money off of content and illegal streaming and ddosing and swatting and there's like the end this list is endless right okay there's like a ton of things that are wrong but still we all do love this in the very end so that we all are working in this startup kind of way to get to a point i think twitch's sale to today is like the highest point of the industry's existence yeah i mean we're a big part of why twitch you know is, is yes. in that mm-hmm. position i mean there's no it's doubt about it it's, it's a synergistic relationship part. yeah of yeah. course um yeah i mean i agree with you I, I think everybody does have the same passion in, in our industry and um you could say a lot of, you can you know you could say our industry isn't big enough to really have this kind of crazy cutthroat competitiveness that I think we, we are seeing right now, right? Um, it's getting there, but we're getting to, like, actually making money. Like, things are, like, profitable, kind of, sort of. And they are. No, uh, there's some organizations that are right? they're actually they're profitable. profitable. MLG is actually in the black for, for like, the first time ever, I, like, recently, they're right? They're still negative 50 million. But, yeah, but still, it doesn't but, matter. You know, like, it, you... it doesn't matter. That's right, Chris. That's the way we kind of think. They're profitable <laughs> right now. ESL, who cares how much money they spend? They're profitable right now. And things are going well right now. There will, there will be more jobs as we progress over the years for teams, leagues, developers, media, I'm sure, streams. Yeah. Nothing catastrophic has happened. Yeah. I, I would be pretty positive in, in the outlook still of stuff. <laughs> Of course, of course. <laughs> All right, let's. Well, why don't we take some calls, guys, uh, from 
some of the. Oh God, are we doing that? Yeah, of course we're doing that. Dude, Chris, I want to hear from you. Okay, I okay, know what yeah, your... yeah, that's true. You want to ask? What are your oh, really? favorite moments of Five. Unfiltered? Unfiltered? Oh wow. Yeah. Unfiltered. Um. Hang on, hang on. You should totally save this until after the calls. Okay. Yeah. Because me... maybe, maybe, maybe we've got something lined up. For I've the heard you guys got a surprise for me. Let's see. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. All right, Logan's maybe. gonna call in here. I have no idea what the fuck that is. <laughs> oh my mm. god, these are all fucked up shit. Logan! Logan, you there? Hello, boys, am I on? Yeah, you're on, Logan, what's up? Alright, fuck oh. yeah, let's do it. I wanted to talk a little <laughs> bit about, uh... <laughs> I want to talk about CSGO All right, and the match cool. bidding scandal going on and uh, kind of like the state of uh, North American Counter-Strike. Alright, cool. I don't know yeah. how much you got into it earlier. I was in a, a class. Yeah, so. not too much. So we, we, yeah, we didn't touch it, dude. It's the, it's the main reason I've been getting DDoS. So, uh, oh, happy God. to bring it up Seriously, again. you've been getting DDoS because you haven't talked about CSGO? No, I've been, I've been getting DDoS because I had the temerity to write about it. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, that, that's why I've had to change my IP every day since I published the, the story. Remove me from this call right now. I'm not ready to get DDoS, bro. I have like all my. No, 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 you're, good. You're, you're good. good. you're good. You're good. <laughs> I reckon, no, I reckon you're I'm a kidding. spy for the DDoSes. That's what I think. You're good. You're good, man. So I kind of want to put this into perspective before I talk about it. About mm -hmm. kind of like where CS is right now and where CS has been in the past couple of years. Because I feel like. When people talk about you know, match fixing and betting and all this and like how it's so bad and all these Reddit threads and ESA and HLTV and all this bullshit, people don't realize what, like, what is the situation of a professional Counter Strike player right now. So, it, you know, if you start back in CGS, like people, I've heard this a lot today on Unfiltered where StarCraft Two was the chosen game. Like this was gonna be the ten year. Like people are gonna get their fucking meal on their plate from this game. Okay. In 2008, 2007, when CGS was coming out, that was Counter-Strike, man. Like, Counter-Strike was the end-all, be-all. We're going on DirecTV. This is like, you could like, quit your job and be a professional gamer. That's what they were pitching out to people. So, and then, of course, CGS dies because everyone pretty much knows that story. And <laughs> everyone leaves Counter-Strike, and it's in, like, the shit fest, and, like... CPL wasn't around anymore because CGS came, so like the major organization that was putting up tournaments is gone. Uh, Cal dies randomly, like, okay, fuck us, like we don't have any sort of online tournament. There's like all this like random bullshit, like Eco League coming out. And I'm talking about specifically for North America because the entire time, meanwhile, uh, Europe has ESL and the ESL Pro Series, so they're, they're kind of doing okay. And they also, Europe has always had a shit little lens, so they're doing kind of okay. And in North America, uh, pretty much the only organization that rose up to carry the torch is ESCA and from like the get-go they were like making everything right they had the perfect anti-cheat they had a stat system like they had land finals they paid people cash on the spot like there wasn't any of this bullshit like people weren't getting paid so it was perfect it, was, well, no, it wasn't perfect but it was like if we we're gonna have anything this is what we had to have and as uh, start as esports had like their second big boom as people like to call it uh, you saw StarCraft get pretty big, like, and all the hype around StarCraft was getting pretty real. And it's it was it's Counter, uh, Counter Strike was in a really similar situation to where StarCraft is kind of right now, where you have StarCraft and people are like dead game, dead game, and they're sitting around, they're looking at like the progress that League of Legends has made, and they're seeing like where League is now, and like how it has the LCS, all this prize money, people are pros, just like that's how Counter Strike was, and they were like. Holy yeah. fuck, dude, this should be us. Like, there was a time period where Live on 3, I'm calling you out, Slasher, would only talk about StarCraft 2 <laughs> events, dude. And maybe the fighting game community a little bit. There wasn't anything else about, like, Counter Strike or it, people who completely abandoned it. May, actually, I think Richard Lewis was, like, the last one to be in Counter Strike space because he was still running Kadred. So, um. But but it's so but it's funny, course. of course. The, the way everyone remembers it is that like I I am the Judas of Counter Strike. <laughs> like I went I, just as CS:GO came out. Like when I was stress testing servers and shit with Valve, I turned around and went, you know what? It's been fun. Here's a kiss on the cheek. Stab you in the back. Fuck you, Christ. You know it was like that isn't what went down. But yeah, you're right, dude. Like I I stuck around until the bitter end, but the community made it intolerable. 
not the state of the game, just the fucking state of the community. All right. Know? So we got we gonna talk about the betting thing or what? I mean, what, what are we, yeah, what are we yeah, talking about? Is, I'm leading yeah. up to this, bro. Just give me a second. <laughs> this is, this is yeah, like a ten minute lead the, in. The, okay. This gotta, guy gotta, has got some okay, shit to sure, say. Okay. Sure. Sure. You gotta understand the frame of mind that's going into this match betting, and it goes fucking deep, dude. Because imagine StarCraft 2, like, let, let's just imagine the consequences of Legacy of the Void failing, and what's gonna happen to the StarCraft community. This is possibly where StarCraft, like, this is, you know, how esports kind of recycles, like, history repeats itself? Anyway, fuck that. Uh, you need to understand this. So let me get it, take my notes real quick. You have fucking yeah, notes, dude. Notes. Are you trying to wow. are you trying to ask that is this gonna happen to Counter Strike because of the betting and the fucked upness of this? Because the answer is no. No, dude. I'm trying to, to totally justify fine. this for North American <laughs> Counter Strike. Dude, this is the best call I've ever had. Come on, Logan. I need you to bring this home for me, brother. <laughs> what are the notes? What are the notes? This is a pretty epic call, though. No, I think he's doing a right now. He's doing arms a line. Are sweaty. Right Palm spaghetti. Right. Uh oh. Yo, Damn it! You totally just fucked right me now. over with the fucking audio magic thing, now, man. No, no, he, he was doing a line. I know. Now, now, now it's uh, now it's muted. All right. So, so can you, you hear me still? I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So Counter Strike right. was just in the fucking pits, dude. Nobody give a shit about that game. Like it was dead. And then uh, all of a sudden, like, so League of Legends and Riot Games is really pushing esports. They're like, okay, in a little bit, they're buying their way in, but. You know, dude, fuck it, fuck? dude. If they're gonna, if they're gonna hand out money, dude, fuck it, dude. We'll take it. And uh, meanwhile, like, I don't know. CS is just shit. And yeah. So, so how, 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 you, you're backtracking. All right. Let's answer. Let's answer the question. I, I, I got. I got. It. Let's I got, get I got into it. the match fixing thing, dude. All right. So Valve announces Dota 2, and they announced Dota 2 <laughs> with the international. And and then a few months later, you know, you start hearing like rumors that, all right, so. Valve is inviting pros to their studio. This is like an abridged version. Right like, well, this is an abridged version of like the history of esports. <laughs> so Chris, Logan is fucking... owning the show right now. Logan they're is the invi- fucking man. I love Logan. <laughs> Yo, dude, I fucking love this shit. So they invite like all these kind of like Illuminati Counter Strike source players. Like Torwell gets invited out to the Valve offices, and there's like a shit little hype created in Counter Strike. Like, oh my God, there's gonna be Counter Strike two. Like. Fuck Source, right? This going to be Counter-Strike 2. It's not even going to be anything else. And uh, there's going to be a new game. They're going to do it right. They're inviting the pros out. They're getting it right this time. And they're going to have an international. Like, this is the kind of shit that was being said, right? Because when Dota 2 was announced, it had an international. And, you know, Counter-Strike has kind of carried Valve and Steam for all these 10 years, right? Like, this was the shit game. Like, remember, guys, we were StarCraft. We were the shit. We had CGS. We were on TV. So that's the kind of expectations that were in the Counter-Strike community and the rumors that were going um- on. And the match okay. fixing. The ma- <laughs> so come on, come on let's Logan. go. Come on, we. Come on, this is the, this is the part where the question has to come in. All right, so to sum it up, dude, like <laughs> NACS has just been fucking dead for a long ass time, and pros have no way to make money. Like if unless you're a top four team, you're not gonna make any money at any LAN events. Like <laughs> European events have so you know much more terrible, pros, right? much more events. You know how bad that we are. I just do you realize. Players are just all very bad. Uh, come that's on, his point. all right. That's, his that's point. not that's okay. not even fair to do. Like, I, if you if I would go on for like an hour about this, oh, well, well, we can't. We definitely. Can't. I, I I thought you already <laughs> had to. Why are the players <laughs> bad? Now I want to hear. Okay, well, fuck you, Steven. Play, all right, all right we don't have all night. No, 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 we're just kidding. We're just it's kidding. Just like, no, 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 Logan, 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 like fix their matches there we to go. make money. When you can make more money fixing a match than actually playing the game professionally, why would any Counter Strike player want to spend like sink forty hours of their life in a week trying to become like a professional at this game if they're not going to make jack shit money? Meanwhile, you have StarCraft Two over here, which is a dead game that has a WCS. You have LCS over here, League of Legends, biggest game of all times. Like, fuck, dude. Like, what is a pro supposed to do? Like, fuck it, dude. Match fix. I'm going to make some money. All right. Okay. Okay. Can you me, I just want to say Richard. one thing real fast that if you could speak like like about seven times faster, you would literally be Thorin. 
where you like, where you give a whole bunch of super low <laughs> historian. And you follow it up with a question. You're a historian. Only one reasonable answer. No, no, because because when you when you put it in that question, then the obvious answer is well, sure, I guess I can understand why they match. I think what you're asking right now isn't so much so like is match fix is match fixing acceptable so much as do is it understandable like like why did oj kill that chick or whatever right like was it right probably not but when you hear about all the shit she did you can kind of understand right that was like a chris rocks kid i think so so i mean i don't know somebody else that's like a really 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 complicated question like i like we wrestled with that and um like and a lot of american politics revolves around you know sometimes we talk about like the absurd amount of money that ceos get paid and shit one of the arguments for why high-level business people get the money they make is because if they don't get enough money from the actual business, then they will find illegal ways to make money, whether it's by, you know, illegally doing the stock bullshit or by, you know, selling information or doing shady shit like that, right? So people are like, you got to pay them well. And this is kind of the same thing, right? If you can make a lot more fixing matches, some people would argue that the stuff that Savior did with, with the match fixing for Brood War came out of people not making enough fucking money playing as a professional. Um, Richard, you can fill in the rest, I guess. No, no, all, all I was going to just... say is... Like the, the the situation in NA Counter Strike is kind of similar to the situation in African football, uh, and that is uh, that you've got a, you, what? Uh, yeah, um, and, and obviously soccer. Soccer. I, I, I don't know what the fuck I we're talking about right now. Yeah, so just... let's, let's do soccer, uh, and, and that is just in the sense that um, you know these people uh, have often talked about how we don't get paid to play away on international duty, we don't get well looked after, we don't make money. Um, and if you operate outside of the top two tiered teams, and there's only ever really been two teams, and ever, uh, you know, even it, at the peak of NA, maybe you can expand that a little bit further to four. But ultimately, in Counter Strike, it's never been a scene that's replete with examples of top tier teams. Um, and they think, you know, fuck it, man. Like every everything that I've looked at, all the evidence I've seen suggests that some people say, you know what, we're never going to be one of those top tier teams if we get into that opportunity where there's a, a way we can fix a game and maybe make something for ourselves. And fuck it, we'll do it. Well, I think where it gets um, a bit more problematic is when top tier teams start doing it and. Um, I know if you were to tell me that that hasn't happened, I don't know if I could agree with you in any confidence. But I don't know, dude. Well, I, like you're never gonna, Logan, you're never Logan, gonna find any bro, you're never yeah. gonna find any smoking gun evidence for it. Unfortunately, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm an American here. Good bro, I'm an American. Wait, Logan, Logan, Logan. I'm an American. Richard's English. He doesn't know, bro. Americans, <laughs> we should probably cheat in every single game. That's how bad we fucking are. Like every esport, okay, in the whole goddamn world, we're never winning a league ever. Dota EG did actually really, really good, and Cloud9 has two Canadians out of their out of their group. But like, you know, the StarCraft players, we got Scarlet, who's awesome, and you know, I, know. Well, I mean, but, you know, uh, like, know. What Logan, what Logan <laughs> might be Roof getting that. at is basically, we just need more shit in North America for these players to have something to play for. I mean, yeah. it, it wouldn't matter whether how shitty we were if there was just more going on here, more tournaments that were offering money, more whatever it may be. So that the problem is, first of all, is that we're calling a lot of people that aren't pros pros. So the minute you do that, they think they're entitled to make money doing this. Um, yep. There are very few pros in all of esports. In all of esports, there's very few pros. Uh, MLG is probably one of the main reasons why we have so many people calling themselves pros when they're not but um that's the first problem then the second problem is is that um when we just look to one or two organizations or one